I need your support to bring the Bible to the plowboy in his own English. I don't need a lot of support because I have a full-time job and I already have some generous support from fellow Christians whose gifts and prayers mean so much to me. I also have a friend of the channel, Jonathan Burris, who does a rough cut edit on my videos for me for free, which is just huge. Now, I'm very sensitive about asking for financial support from others. I ran this channel for two years for free and it was a delight to do so, like Paul says. But the reason I could do it for free, that I could muzzle this ox, is that in God's providence, my boss at Logos got me video equipment during COVID to do a video podcast for them. And he was happy for me to use it to develop my own channel as well. Slowly, I have purchased some of my own equipment for the channel, especially an expensive Sony a7 IV camera and a few not cheap lenses. I also have microphones and other assorted gear that I use for the channel. But HR at Logos is now asking that I use only my own stuff for my channel, minus a few minor things that are hard to switch out of a home office, like bulky video lights like the one I have up here. I'm grateful I can still use those, but I intend to follow their policy to a T. It's totally their right. So I have just had to purchase a new laptop coming tomorrow and new software for video recording and editing. And I've had to sign up for some software services I wasn't paying for previously. Free software can do some of the work, but interviews in particular require a monthly subscription. And as it happens, my wife and I have finally had to decide too that my home office that you see back here needs to move into a new space that we're gonna have to create in the garage. We need my office to go to my growing young teenage son. There's gonna be some expense attached to this office construction and studio construction and a number of Saturdays, quite a few in which I'll need to do some of that construction work. I'd like the channel to pay for itself so I can be a good steward of my ministry and church and family opportunities. Would you be willing to support me monthly? I'll tell you in a bit how you can do that. But first, let me tell you what you will be supporting if you don't already know. You'll be supporting messages like these two that I just got in the last few days. These are two of just countless I could share. Here's one from a young family man. I became a Christian not too many years ago and was brought up under the King James Version as a new disciple. Having discovered this channel and changing opinion on particular topics such as this, he means King James onlyism. My family has now come to use the ESV in our general use and study. My wife and children in particular appreciated the change very much. They used to tell me how difficult it was to follow the preacher or to read to themselves because of the nature of the language used in the King James. While I personally still love and prefer to have a King James at my desk for reading and study, I also have the ESV to read alongside my family and for helping interpret things that I may otherwise miss. Thank you, brother, for all that you do. Your channel has been a beautiful blessing to our family. Notice that people who really listen and benefit from my videos know that I'm not condemning the King James Version. They don't fear a rebuke from me when they tell me in a comment like this one that they're still using the King James. They know, if they've really heard me, that what I'm really after is people understanding God's word. When you support my channel, you support people like this, or like this, from someone who will introduce himself in his comment. I, I get comments like this all the time. Hi Mark, thanks for accepting my friend request. I'm a youth director at a King James only church in name withheld. I grew up in a very conservative independent fundamental Baptist church and had influences from many proponents of King James onlyism in my life. I went to name withheld Baptist college and I have many friends who went to colleges like West Coast, Heartland, Fairhaven, Ambassador, etc. But a couple of years ago, I started realizing that many of the King James only arguments that I had listened to multiple times from men like Ted Alexander, and he points out that when I was on the RFP, the Recovering Fundamentalist podcast, they played a clip of Ted Alexander preaching at Name Withheld Baptist Church. This brother says that he was in the audience for that conference and sat under college classes that Ted Alexander taught. He saw that these arguments simply didn't add up. I've been doing a lot of research, he says, on the King James issue over the past couple of months and just finished reading your book that would be authorized, The Use and Misuse of the King James Bible, a couple weeks ago. The catalyst that really triggered me to look deeper into the topic a few months ago was finding Jonathan Burris on YouTube and watching what he went through simply for pointing out a couple spots where the NIV translators were right. By the way, I would love to see an interview with him. And you shall, my friend, you shall. That's the plan. Jonathan is a good brother, and that story is really profound. 
You both have been very instrumental in helping me change my view on King James Onlyism. While I have not actually gone out and bought a physical Bible in another version yet, I have been using multiple versions in parallel in Logos in my study for teaching. It has helped me greatly in my understanding of Scripture. Amen. Thank you for your gracious spirit when addressing this subject. If you would have had the same spirit as many of the men that I grew up under, I would still be a hardcore King James Onlyist. Thank you for your work. It's making a difference. I know what it's like to be King James only. I know how hard it can be to come to realize that you've been wrong, and maybe sometimes even harder to realize that your trusted pastors and teachers and parents have been wrong, to insist on the exclusive use of the King James Version. I treat such people gently because I was one. I don't use sarcasm, and this is why. This young man needed me to obey Paul's command to instruct my opponents with meekness and gentleness. There are many, many problems in the world that are far more significant than King James Onlyism. But the work of edification and instruction for these brothers and sisters is worth doing. They need loving help. When you support me with prayer or financial gifts, you support them. There are a lot of hidden costs for building a YouTube channel. During a recent shoot for the Textual Confidence Collective, a dear friend of mine plugged the wrong plug into a light and it shorted out and I had to spend a hundred bucks today on a part from the Netherlands to fix it. I bought a meal for all the participants in a large panel discussion we were doing for the TCC, including some VIPs that you're going to enjoy hearing from. I've tried to keep supporters aware in general of how I'm using their gifts without overwhelming them with financial and practical talk. I want the focus on this channel to be free, nerdy Bible instruction. I don't even ask people to like and subscribe. I've got three ways, though, that you can help out with a gift, because now I am asking. First is to join this channel here on YouTube. Become a member at whatever support level seems appropriate to you. For those who want in early on videos, there's an option for that. For those who want me to make them a video each year that's custom, there's an option for that. I also write messages and give background info that goes to supporters only, though I am committed to the idea that all substantive videos will be free for everyone who wants them. Second is to support me on Patreon. Some people don't like their money going through Google that owns YouTube. That's totally fine. I try to send the same messages to my Patreon supporters that I send to my YouTube channel members. Third, I've got a wish list of items that I need for the channel up on Buy Me A Coffee. And I'm so grateful for those who've helped me buy a microphone and a light and some other pieces of video equipment there. Would you be willing to use one of these methods to support the channel? I have a little informal ministry board of about eight brothers who are helping me make sure I'm a good steward of what I receive, but mostly the proof of the pudding is in the videos that I make. You can see each week on Thursday what I'm doing with your support. And for those who can't give, I would love to get your prayer support, truly. I myself support financially just a few, I think it's three or three missionaries every month, a Bible translator and an evangelist and somebody else, oh, a Christian Drug Treatment Center uh, director. And I, I find it's actually easier to just give them money on, you know, auto draft than it is to remember them in prayer. But either kind of gift is very valuable to me. And now I'm going to get back to helping that poor plowboy who needs the Bible in his own English.